And you've got your co I mean, I, I just think that this sets up for taking some the of sign. the best turn of right. these NFL franchises that are having great success. Mile, Another turn guy right that I Orchard think Lane is, Road. it's, I don't necessarily know that he'd even be interested in making this leap. He's been around NFL scouting for over two decades, and that's Jim Nagy down at the, he's the ex current executive director at the uh, Senior Bowl. Yeah. Um, and I think he's a guy that at, at least you should Turn talk right to. Orchard, I don't Lake think Road. he's qualified right now to be a GM, but he is a guy that could help you develop your scouting department. He basically puts together two expansion teams every year of the seniors that are coming out. Now, he's not Turn allowed to, to, to dip into that, you know, that talent that's coming out early because they're not seniors. But he is a guy that is, is a tremendous t talent evaluator. A great football mind, has been with the Patriots, has been, uh, I think he was an Indy. Um, there was one other team that he was with, uh, I, I can't remember right now, but a guy that has Green Bay, uh, I believe he was there, that has experience in, in building Super Bowl winning teams. Not that he was the guy that built them, but he was around to learn and to evaluate and to be part of it. Let me give you another name that I haven't heard mentioned. Now, his last name has been mentioned. However, he's not related, even though he works for the same organization. Vince Newsom. Vince Newsom, no relation to Ozzy, as far as I can find, is the director of pro personnel for the Baltimore Ravens. He's been there since 2009. He's a former player for the Rams and the Browns. So that's another name to think of. As far as real quick, uh, an outside-the-box head coaching if you believe what you read, they want somebody with experience. And he didn't do a great job in his first go-around, but he's back to being a coordinator, and people just love him. His players play hard for him, and that's Leslie Frazier. Yeah. Leslie Frazier did not do have a great team with the Minnesota Vikings. He won good year and uh, won a horrible year, and I think his first year was more of an interim deal. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, that's a name just to think, to think about because they want somebody with experience. With experience. Yes. All right, coming up next, former Lion, but more importantly, the analyst for CBS Sports and the SEC, Gary Danielson, will get his take on the uh, SEC championship game this weekend and uh, whether Ohio State deserves to be in the playoff. 97 won the WXYT FM and WXYT HD1 Detroit. Sports Station. Sports headlines all day, every day. From the sold by Mark Z Sports Desk, this is 97.1. The ticket. Let's open with the Lions. The interim head coach, Daryl Bevel, says that they'll quote ride it out. Stay in the left lane. For determining if Matthew Stafford will play this coming Sunday against the Tennessee Titans. Stafford suffered a ribbon on Sunday's loss to the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, Lions ownership will interview Rick Smith later this week or early next week for the team's vacant GM position. The 50-year-old Smith was GM of the Houston Texans from 2006 until stepping down from that role in 2017. Monday Night Football last night, the Baltimore Ravens would outlast the Cleveland Browns, 47-42. to Jim Harbaugh tells reporters during his weekly press conference yesterday that he's committed to remaining at Michigan and that he's not looking to coach in the NFL next season. One other item from college football this morning, Michigan State's Shakur Brown, who leads all of Division I with five interceptions this season, announces on social media last night he's decided to forego his remaining eligibility with the Spartans and will enter next April's NFL draft. In an interview with MLB Network Radio yesterday, New Tigers manager A.J. Hinch says he's been pretty busy the last couple of weeks as he attempts to touch base with just about everyone who's current on the team's roster. In a quarter mile, you turn right onto East Huron Street. Incredible in that. You know, he just wants me to make it better. And, and that type of thirst for, for, for getting better is, is critical mindset going into to what we're trying to do. Pitchers and catchers are set to report to Lakeland for the start of spring training just two months from today. From the Ticket Update Desk, I'm Tony Ortiz. For more, stay tuned to 971 The Ticket and Radio.com. Live from the Jamie Samuelson Studio, Stoney and Chanson on 97.1 The Ticket. All right, our top number 248 539 uh, Jim Harbaugh will join us at 7.35. Speaking of uh, former quarterbacks. At the light, turn uh, right onto East Huron Street. Played for the Lions, as you know, and he 
also played for the Cleveland Browns, and I know he played for the Browns. He didn't have the offense that uh, they showed last night, even in the loss. Uh, but Gary Danielson, of course, does great work, as always, for CBS Sports, uh, doing the SEC. And he joins and us now. Gary. right to merge onto M59 East toward Utica. Twitter, like Danielson, hardball fucking back. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, how's it going? Continue straight, then use the right two lanes to keep right to merge onto M59 East toward Utica. <laughs> Use the right two lanes to keep right to merge onto M59 East toward Utica. It's 7.8 miles. Take exit 46 onto M150 toward Rochester.
turn right onto South Rochester Road. You know, I mean, that road's not fair, but I don't think so, you know? And I think that's why you look forward. I'm not a big beauty contest guy, but I think in this year, what are you going to do? Turn right. It's a different year. The SEC, roundly finish your question, was committed to playing the whole schedule. They stuck to it. Florida lost the game. They have to look at the consequences. Gary Danielson joins us from CB, uh, CBS Sports. So you have Bama in, in Florida. Could be a battle for the Heisman Trophy, too, Mac Jones versus uh, Kyle Trask. What do you think is going to happen on Saturday? And do you think this does have ultimate Heisman implications? Well, I, I thought it would be the showdown for the Heisman until that you know last game that they lost. Now, now I think it gets a little bit of complicated. I, I really don't know how it's going to end up. But I think there's also an impact. And I... And I not good at this, but I'm trying to think of a team that had a, a second guy involved that impacted as well. I mean, Devontae Smith and the way he's playing is going to take votes away from Mac Jones, so that could be a little bit complicated in the end of it, you know, so I, mean, I don't know. In a quarter mile, turn left onto East South Boulevard. Each other, they, you know, so um, they're great players. And, you know, Florida did not play their most impactful player in the game against LSU. I understand why. He didn't practice all week. And I think with a judgment like at the light, wait, we turn left onto East South Alabama. Boulevard. And we need him. He will be there. Kyle Pitts is a monster. So you have a monster at wide receiver who no one can cover. I'm going to tell you, no one can cover Devontae Smith. In one mile, turn right onto John R. Road. And Kyle's uh, Pitts, a six foot six uh, mismatch. And when you have a mismatch in tight end, it distorts defenses all over the field. Funny, I'm rambling a bit. Last year, Bellis was a tight end with Flair. And he was such a mismatch in the backfield that it really distorted every team they played defense. And this time, Florida's tight end distorts defense because it's really tough to move your defense around and double team a tight end the way it is to double team, let's say, a, a, a wide receiver. So, uh, yes, Florida can score. They have a shot. And I, for one, think that in the right, you know, like if Notre Dame wins, I don't see why Florida still can't put their resume up to the to the committee and say, all right, we're not automatically in. But say we have the worst loss, LSU. Okay, give it as a bad loss, okay? We looked ahead. We're kids. We didn't play great, okay? And But they'll have the best win if they beat Alabama. And who are you going to put in? You guys tell me. If you don't put in Florida, if you get in, please I, I respect everybody. At the light, but turn you right can't say John R. I mean, and look the at their schedule. Usually, your if you're going to put a non-power five team in, they had to have beaten someone on their schedule that gives them the credibility. Remember before Boise State beat somebody, you know, Ohio State, you know, Oklahoma. This year, they don't have a good win. The only one I'd say would be uh, from your conference, it's Texas a and because they beat Florida, right? Yeah, but... Championships got them. Right? I, I they know. lost the five is on your left. I mean, it was I know. 16, 28. And if you watch AM play, I, I, listen, it's a mess. Um, it's a fun, there's a funny Arrived. golf cartoon. You guys might react to this. There's a guy who says, All right, you want to play golf? And he goes, Okay, what do, well, how do you play? He goes, Okay, what's the object? You got to hit this ball in the hole. And he goes, Well, how do you win? He goes, Well, you take the fewest strokes, but that's how you win. And he goes, well, why play? And that's kind of the thing here. Like, I mean, Ohio State, as you start off with this question, should Notre Dame and Clemson even play?